Hello everybody and welcome back to the Brigazoid's Den. Today we are talking about the new Owl House episode because of course it is Saturday. I just finished watching it and overall I would say that it was better than last week's but still not my favorite. This is not the kind of like style I'm really looking for. I'm, I'm looking for more like heavy story based episodes but it was still enjoyable. It was still entertaining brought us, uh, or shed some light on the, uh, Blight, I didn't really mean to rhyme there, but I did, shed some light on the Blight situation, the family situation, and how strong their relationships really are, as well as giving us a very, very small amount of information on the Day of Unity, and also giving Edric Blight, you know, uh, telling him that he is not really a failure, kind of, so that was kind of nice, that was sweet, um, but yeah, overall, this was a pretty, like, pretty simple storyline, but it also had, like, a lot of other little things thrown in here that um, were pretty interesting to, to watch uh, unfold. So, we will get into the breakdown right now. So, let me start with the opening here, which was extremely, extremely quick. It was a very quick scene. And basically what happens is Luz's phone is ringing with an event from her mother, and that kind of, like, surprises her. Now, originally, obviously, writing this note down, I didn't know what this was, but... As we get later into the episode, uh, it is clearly a very important thing to both Luz and Camila, which uh, Camila is Luz's mother, if you did not know. Um, and this is a very important event to both of them. And um, actually, I guess you could say that this kind of reveals something as well. A question that we had um, based off of episode 10, I think, yesterday's lie, when we went to the human realm and we saw this um, this character, I guess, in a photograph. You probably can already guess who it is, and if you watch the episode, you already know who it is. But um, yeah, that was the opening there, and now we'll actually get into like the main episode here. So the episode opens up with Luz searching for a way home. She has like a whole like board out and putting all these different pieces together about like uh, Bellos and, and the Emperor's Coven, and she's trying to make a door, and all this stuff is going on just to distract her from this, this uh, notification, I guess, that comes on her phone every once in a while. She reveals that she has learned a new glyph, a hover glyph, which came in pretty handy in later in this episode. And now, there was also something I wanted to mention here. Uh, Willow gave Luz Hunter's Pentagram, and now there was like a little funny conversation um, over their, the phone there. So, Hunter, I'm telling you, the redemption arc is coming for Hunter. He is going to be a good guy. I mean, I already kind of consider him a good guy, to be honest with you. He hasn't done anything too terrible yet, so... I would say he's a good guy, but whatever. Um, so Luz is obviously stressed because she had a ceremony that she always did with her mother. And uh, Amity walks in saying that she wants to enter the Bonesboro Brawl, which is like a witch's duel kind of thing. For, or not witch, I guess just not witches, but uh, a duel in Bonesboro, basically. Um, that her dad, Alador Blight, had done when he was younger. But Alador says no. Of course, Alador is you know, uh, a fan favorite character for me based off of the uh, his appearance in episode 2. Although, i got to be honest with you, he feels a little bit, like, different in this episode. I don't know if I'm completely sold on it. He doesn't seem as, like, uh, how would I explain it? He doesn't seem as uh, derpy, maybe? I, I don't know how you would explain it, but he was just kind of like, a, he would always go off and do his own thing. He would see, like, a butterfly and want to examine it. He'd, you know, work on his abomatons and things like that, but now he actually seems like a full, like, fleshed-out character with his own personality, so. Anyways, Amity says that she does not want to join a coven anymore, and again, wants to join the Bonesboro Brawl to prove to her dad that she can pull it off, that she's, you know, similar to him, like him. So Amity gets this new look from these concealment stones that Edric and er Emera use, revealing their true selves. Emera has, you know, messed up hair, acne, and then Edric has, like, a yellow shirt on. His hair is pulled back, so... It's just weird to see them without those concealment stones, because they look so different, I guess. Ida and King confront Warden Wrath, the reigning champion at the Bonesboro Brawl, about any castle, Emperor's Coven, castle, gossip, or anything like that, um, which they don't, it's very unsuccessful, but uh, Amity has her first match in the Bonesboro Brawl, and then has taken, uh, Amity's been shown that, or showing that she's been, take, is like, can take care of herself for now. So Luz is once again getting distracted by, you know, the notification on her phone and decides that she will join the Bonesboro Brawl to get herself distracted as well. 
So, um, while that is all happening, Edric joins Ida and King in trying to make a blabber serum, because uh, Edric was not able to help Amity, Emra, and, Emra, and Luz while, you know, they were preparing for the Bonesboro Brawl. Instead, Edric will be helping King and Ida make a blabber serum so that they can get Warden Wrath to talk about all the Emperor's Coven Castle gossip, basically. So Luz has her first match in the Bonesboro Brawl. A lot of fighting this episode, by the way, of course, because this is a brawl. Um, and, you know, just a pretty standard Owl House fight, but it looks very cool. And we go into this montage of Ida, Edric, and King trying to make a blabber serum while Luz, Emera, and Amity are winning Bonesboro Brawl matches. Amity is getting healed, and Luz is kind of just trying to can keep talking to Amity and Emera to distract herself, but when, they're, when they need to focus, she has to kind of, like, go away, and then she's getting distracted from the ceremony. The Abomaton that was Amity's guard returns, um, Amity's guard when she was heading over to the Owl House, and its alarm reminds Luz about her mother's ceremony. Luz hits the Abomaton, causing Alador to be alerted to the brawl, basically. He knows where Amity is at this point. Amity confronts Luz about her problems under the, I believe it was under the tree that they created when they destroyed the, um, uh, in, in, uh, the Grom, Grometheus the Fearbringer, I think it was. Yeah, I believe it was that same tree, which was pretty cool. See that return. Um, and, um, Alador is basically completely against Amity being a part of the Bonesboro Brawl, and ties up Warden Wrath with ease, because he was, like, the final person that Amity had to take care of, I guess, and Alador quickly wipes the floor with Warden Wrath, um, because he has done this before. Amity is angry, runs away with an invisibility glyph to get away from uh, Alador and Luz. Meanwhile, Edric wants to bring the, the blabber serum over to Warden Wrath while he's tied up. And um, King is try is getting Ida, so he's all on his own for this. And then Luz and Amity talk about Luz's issue, and it's the anniversary of her dad passing away. So we get a lot of information from that. Of course, as I was saying in the beginning of this video, in yesterday's lie, we saw um, the photos of Luz, Camila, and her dad. We don't get a name in this episode. I don't think we ever will get a name, and we don't need a name. But we saw the photographs of um, Luz's family, and we never, and there was like kind of like a glare on her father, so we didn't actually get to see what he looks like. Uh, we didn't really get to see what he looks like here. We got like half of his face, I think it was, in, in a photo. But um, yeah, so it's good to know that that's, that was the reason why, is because her dad passed away. So that's interesting to note. And then we're going back to where Edric changed the recipe of the blabber serum, adding fire bee honey when obviously he wasn't supposed to. This causes Warden Wrath to become a huge monster, basically, and everybody fights Warden Wrath. This was a really, really cool, well done, like, fight for the episode here. This was definitely the coolest fight of the episode, and I would say one of the cooler fights of the Owl House overall. I should do, like, a ranking of, of the best fights in the Owl House. Oh, you know it's probably already going to be confirmed. It's probably already going to be, like, everybody knows what it's going to be. It's probably going to be Eclipse Lake. Uh, well, actually, maybe. There's actually maybe more than I thought. Maybe I'll do that. Anyways, um, this is a really cool fight. Amity and Alador work together to put their abomination magic together. Or, yeah, abomination magic together to uh, take down Warden Wrath, as well as Ida in her heartbeat form, taking Luz to the skies to throw down some ice glyphs onto Warden Wrath to take him down as well. So, Amity tells Alador she is making her own choices now. She doesn't want to be a part of the a coven or anything. She wants to just kind of do whatever she wants. Then, Warden Wrath, we learn, got demoted from actually being a part of the Emperor's coven, but the only information that we really got out of him was that the Day of Unity is going to unite the world with the Titan. So, that's interesting because I actually thought this was going to unite the world with the Earth realm, I guess, if you could call it, um, and I guess it's not, I guess it's uniting them with the Titan, which, I mean, I think we kind of mostly knew, like, I knew the Titan was going to be a part of it, um, I guess I just don't know what it means by uniting the world with the Titan, I mean, the Titan comes back, I guess, so, I, I mean, this is kind of information we sort of already knew, just judging by some of the other stuff in the epi other episodes, but I guess it's still good for that little confirmation, so, Edric, uh, Ida and King say that Edric has a future in wild magic because he has done a little bit of beastkeeping, a little bit of potions magic, and obviously he does um, illusionist magic as well. And then Alador and Amity have a conversation. Alador has not been paying attention to Amity like he probably should, 
didn't know that Luz and Amity were dating, things like that. And then Amity and Luz go to, like, this cliffside where they make flowers for Luz's dad with a glyph. And then back in the human realm, Camilla puts flowers out as well. And that is the end of the episode there. So there isn't really too much to say. I mean, there wasn't too much that really happened for, like, the storyline. The, again, the best thing that we really got out of this one uh, for the main overall story was that the Day of Unity is going to unite the world with the Titan. Which, I mean... <clears throat> Again, we kind of already knew, kind of already knew that, just based off of some of like the other parts of the episodes, like the opening of I think it was episode six, where Emperor Bellos calls all the coven heads to like the the throne room, and they all put their like pendants into that table, and then get shown like this vision of the Titan. So again, we kind of already knew this, um, but other than that, nothing too crazy happened for many story moments i mean obviously again we got the confirmation that Luz's dad passed away um we got to see edric you know kind of being respected a little bit future and wild magic again also very interesting to hear um just kind of going through my notes here to see if there was anything crazy oh new hover glyph but you know that was just a quick little thing um and yeah, I mean, again, that was really it. That's really all that I picked up from this episode. There wasn't a lot of um, content for theory making or anything like that for this episode. But it was still a pretty en enjoyable, relatively enjoyable episode. Um, it was, I th again, I thought it was better than last week's episode for me. Last week's episode I wasn't too crazy of a fan of, but this one was a little bit better. I'm just excited for more story-heavy episodes, I'm feeling. Like, like Hollow Mind which is coming up in, I think, a couple weeks, maybe even, is it next week? I don't know, actually. That episode is going to be crazy. I know I keep talking about that one, but that one is going to be crazy. I am so excited for that episode. But for now, we just have, like, these little story episodes giving us little itty-bitty pieces of information for the Day of Unity and the Emperor's Coven and other storylines, I guess. So, yeah, overall, pretty solid episode. Not the best, not the worst. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed that video, do the common YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.